Uh, two more uh, stories I want to talk about, both involving the BBC. Uh, the BBC chiefs have been forced to defend their diversity czar, June Sarpong. Uh, she's being paid £267,000 a year for, wait for it, a three-day week. That means uh, pro rata she's paid more than the Director General Tim uh, Davey. Uh, extraordinary uh, amounts of money, but also lots of criticism of the BBC and their coverage of events in Tokyo. Well, let's talk about all of this with Neil Wallace, media commentator and former newspaper editor. Good morning to you, Neil. Good morning, Julia. Good morning. Let's let's talk about the uh, BBC's part-time diversity champion. Um, I've met June Sumpong over the years, done various bits of telly with her. Uh, as a person, I get on with her very well. I'm not entirely sure what qualifications June Sumpong has to be on £267,000 a year at the BBC advising on diversity, other than her ethnicity. But I'm, I, I'm that's a genuine, genuinely absolutely perplexed as to what her training, what her expertise is in this, other than that she was on the telly, people recognised her and she's a person of colour that seems to be her qualification uh, uh, qualifications for the job but 267 grand for three days a week wow it's extraordinary some of her qualifications julia basically is she is a classic member of that sort of soft left bbc establishment that's what it's about she's written a couple of books about diversity and as you say i've met her too she's a very nice woman and a very intelligent woman yes but what an extraordinary amount of money that is. That puts her number five in the top ten best-paid BBC personalities. She's under Gary Lineker and a couple of others. But then there she goes, straight in. It's an extraordinary amount of money. And it's such a bizarre job title. Yeah. It's such a bizarre job. If you look at the details of the BBC... They're the most, they're more diverse than the rest of the country put together. Well, indeed, and they've got those new diversity um, you know, targets, which are, you know, in terms of representing people who are trans or gay or, or, or of colour, they are vastly overrepresentative of actually the general population at large. Now, I couldn't care less whether somebody is white, black, gay, straight, trans, well, I mean, a woman, man, I don't care. I'm not interested. Are you, the, are you the best person for the job? That's the only thing I'm interested in. But it does seem to me that in needing to appoint somebody, apparently, to this job, um, who, whose work I'm not actually aware of, I mean, other than at least I have seen her diversity book, and I'm, frankly, it could have been it could have been a newspaper article dashed out in an hour, uh, having actually looked through the book and, and talked about it with her on air, with all due respect, June. Um, but um, but uh, in terms of the level of sophistication of this book, but but it seems to me the BBC is basically saying, if we, we need to improve diversity in the BBC, that we're racist. They're saying our interview and, and qualifications, expectations, our procedure for hiring people, the people who are doing the interviews, are racist because otherwise they would be hiring these people otherwise. And we need to have quotas to make sure we hire people uh, with the correct skin colour, uh, religious views, uh, um, di disabilities, um, sexuality or gender. We, and we need to be doing that specifically because otherwise these people won't get hired. That's quite an insult to the people doing the hiring at the BBC, surely. Um, I'm sure you're, you're right. I totally agree with you. And the amount of money being spent on this, Julia, she runs a £100 million project to do this. But as, you, as we mentioned earlier, they already exceed yeah. the rest of the population in, in these proportionalities. Um, and, and the idea is their intention is they want to be... 20% diverse. So what on earth that means when yeah. I think uh, the last figure I saw was under 14% of the of the country is BME. And they say they want a BME person on every interview panel. A BME. Now, equality has to be right, doesn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. The world is diverse and it has to be. But going the other way, and in fact, some of their figures that they came out with recently... Um, show that they're disproportionate in some areas. I tell yeah. you the area they are not uh, diverse in, uh, Julie, is the working class. Yes. And where you have a real issue with the BBC is some big, almost 20% of people who work at the BBC are privately educated. Now, that's yeah. fine if their parents can afford it. But in the real world, that's 6%. 61% yeah. of people who work at the BBC come from professional families, architects, lawyers, etc., yeah. etc. The, the working class folk? Oh, no. 
Yeah. Less exactly. One yeah. of the reasons why they didn't predict Brexit, indeed. Um, yeah, exactly. We haven't we've barely even got time to get through to the BBC's coverage of uh, what's the, the, the games in Tokyo, uh, selling uh, the, the, I mean, the decision of the International Olympic Committee to give the uh, the, the games coverage, uh, sell it a huge amount of money to the Discovery pay per view channel. Um, you actually have to, you know, pay for that channel. It's not free on demand. Lots of criticism. The BBC isn't showing enough of the coverage. Of course, they, they're the ones with the rights here in the UK, but only two sports at a time. Uh, do you think it was a big, uh, it was a wrong decision to not maybe bid more than Discovery? Uh, or, or do you think actually the, just, the problem is the International Olympic Committee putting it on pay-per-view and not letting people actually see this for free? I think it's a, a double thing. I think the IOC are just desperately trying to make money out of this. Yeah. And I think it's an outrage that... All these rights were sold to Discovery. But certainly the BBC, that's the home of the Tokyo Games. That's where it should be yeah. um, for ordinary people. Uh, that's where they're going to watch it. They're not going to be able to go to Discovery. No. Or exactly. We'll have to leave it there. Neil Wallace, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. My final guest of this morning. Delighted.